So we've blocked out the foundations of our character. We've built the basic body, the basic framework, which we're then going to build on top of uh, to add more details and to make it look more like the guy in the concept. And as you can see, I've added in a few more details here and there. You don't need to go that far because a lot of this is going to be covered up. So it's entirely up to you how far you take this. I've done a little bit more on this model just because then I can put it to one side and I can use it on a future project if I need to and it's had that little bit of extra work done on it. And you never know, while we're working we might decide that maybe his top or whatever he's wearing may come around here rather than be a sleeve in which case it shows his shoulder off a bit more and we've already built this little bit of detail in here just highlighting these muscles. So it's, it's to, completely up to you how far you take this. So next we're going to concentrate on his clothing. Let's bring back the concept. So as we can see we have a bandana around his face covering up his nose and his mouth, uh, a belt, straps on his arms, some sort of cape. Uh, there's not lots of detail in this concept, but that's the idea really. I didn't want to nail down the design uh, completely. I wanted something to give us a starting point, and then as we're building, we can change things. If, for example, he's looking too symmetrical, uh, he's got straps on this arm here and on here, we may decide, get rid of the straps on this arm, uh, just to give it less make it look less mirrored and a lot more interesting. As a basic rule you should try not to keep to make your character concepts completely symmetrical. It's too boring um, it's, and it's not very interesting to look at and what you want is a more interesting silhouette. So if you imagine this guy had a bright light behind him and he was just black he'd have quite an interesting silhouette because he has all these going on. He has this bit of armor just on one shoulder, the belt and they help to break up the symmetry. So what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on blocking out the clothing. We're not going into super high detail at this point. We just want to get the shapes in place and just see how it all balances out. And like I say, then we can assess just uh, what needs changing, what needs tweaking, what works and what doesn't. Because at the end of the day, what works on a 2D image may not work on a 3D image. So that's enough waffling. Let's go in and start to build some of the clothing and the straps on his arms, his bandana, his poncho, etc. And we'll just see how, he's, uh, how it's looking as we're going and change things if we feel like they need it. Again, like the first video, I'll start off by building some of the elements, but then I'll slip into a time lapse just to speed up the video and just to give you a general over overview of what we're doing and how I'm approaching building some of these elements. But uh, what I'm going to do, I'm either going to use the base model we have, duplicate the geometry and then work on top of that because that will give us the main shapes to start off with or I'll start off with basic primitives. But you'll see that as we're modelling. So let's go in and start to build his bandana. Now we could select this and select these, increase our selection, duplicate that and we've pretty much got the bandana shape. But if we look at the, the edges and the edge flow, we want the edges to go completely round like that, horizontally. Now this is so that we can build increases and just so we can add in a bit more detail and the actual flow of the cloth uh, actually flows a lot better. So what we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate the top one like so and then we've got the starting point for our bandana. We will scale that down and then we're just going to bring that down and scale it in. Again bring it down and scale it in. Now don't worry too much about geometry being underneath other geometry when we come to create the game model, we'll get rid of all that. For this version, we don't really need to worry about it. So there, we're just scaling them out. So it fits over his actual mouth. And then this section needs to be raised because that's over his nose. But what we can do is maybe just 
select everything else and then bring that down like that and then I'm just gonna scale the edges in and that will give us a nice lip on the top just smooth shade that and we'll hide the wireframe as you can see we're already starting to build up that bandana shape what we might do is we may refine the shape of the head slightly just pulling out these corner points because it's looking a bit square but we can tweak that as we go again bring this in slightly create another extrude bring it down and we want his neck to be a bit wider at the bottom and this is all we're doing just extrude tweak the shape we can slide those edges up if we want to bring them up a bit just to fit the shape a bit more and there we have the very basic bandana shape and then when we're happy with the shape we can go in and we can add in more edge loops and then we can start to break up the symmetry by adding in just a few little creases and folds just by pulling this geometry around like so just just playing around with it basically I mean that just looks like a lump but if I undo all that and undo that so the back needs to come down slightly as well because this is where the knot will be sort of around here but that's basically what we're going to do for the straps on the arms we'll probably duplicate this and then adjust it to fit and then duplicate that again and create the other straps the same for his boots we'll duplicate the bottom of the feet scale them out and then we'll add more details on top of it but like I said originally I'm going to now just slip into time lapse while I go through and block out all the rest of the elements and then we'll, I'll see you at the end of the video where I'll just do a brief overview and we can have a look at how the model's shaping up
So we've started to build onto our base character and just build in some clothing. As you can see, I've just been using base uh, primitives to get me started, and I've also been using the base mesh as well, just to build on top of and duplicate areas. Uh, and sections like the feet, I del deleted the bottom bits from the mesh just so I could work, uh, just so I could uh, work on the boots a bit more freely and adjust the shape without the base mesh popping through. Uh, I'm going to continue on now. And basically just adding more detail here. I need to add in the belt around here, uh, some a glove sort of with some studs on here. But again, that will just be like these straps uh, across the knuckles here with some studs on. This will have some depth. And I'm just going to continue on. But I'm not. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go in and add in loads and loads of details. This does need some more wrinkles and creases because it bunches up at the back. But we'll add that in in the next video. Um, the same with uh, with this here, this poncho. We need a belt around his waist and one along his uh, across his shoulders here. Uh, and we're just going to experiment with some ideas and just play around with it and just build what we like into it, just to make him look more interesting. It doesn't matter if you veer off from the concept slightly, so long as you've got those key elements in there, which we have done. We've got his bandana, we're going to build in his armour here, which again, we'll start from a cube and just mould that into shape. To get the hard edges, we're just going to bevel them. So if, for example, we want to harden the edges of these straps, which we will do eventually, and we'll probably build in a, a few creases in them as well. But again, that's in a future video. All we're going to do is just press B. Well, in silo, press B. In whatever op application you're using, just bevel them and that will harden those edges for you. Now what that does, that means that rather than creasing them, which a lot of applications let you do, this will keep that hard edge information so that when we export this, which we're going to do to Maya, we don't have to worry about going back in, adding in more all the creases again, because it will already be built in to the geometry in the form of these bevels. So from here on, continue bot, uh, modeling, add in whatever details you like, um, play around with it and just have a bit of fun. You know, make him as, as interesting as you like and spend as long on him as you like. But just block in the clothing. We're not interested in adding in details yet. We just want the basic shapes in there, just so we can see how he's looking, get an idea for the flow of the geometry and uh, also trying to avoid symmetry like he has his straps on this arm, arm but I've avoided putting them on that arm if I hide his poncho you'll see he's sleeveless on this side but I've added a sleeve on this side here just to get away from that symmetry and obviously he'll have his armor on his shoulder here the idea is this hand will be holding his sword and this arm will be sort of his uh, his shield arm so he needs the armor on his or, or shoulder. He'll be holding a shield or something, possibly in this hand here. So this arm needs to be, and this side of his body needs to be armored up. But you get the general idea there. Um, like I say, just play around with this model a lot more, building a lot more of the basic shapes, more armor onto his boots, um, maybe add sections into his poncho so there's more different layers. Um, and just, uh, just get to a point where you're happy to move on. And then in the next video, we'll start looking at just adding in a bit more detail. And maybe building in his hair. And uh, deciding on what we're going to do about his eyes as well.